What up, everybody? It's your girl, July, from Kickback Couture, and today I'm going to show you how to mix trap drums. So I have this basic pattern programmed, and we will just start from, from, the, from the bottom. Let's get it. So I haven't done anything to this at all, other than program it. Kind of harsh. So... What I usually do is I start off with my kick. So I'm going to solo my kick and I'm just going to listen to it. Now this is these are drums that everybody has, very common. Uh they are in all the free drum kits, all the trap drum kits have all the same drums basically. Problem with this rack kick is that it's popping at the end of the sample. So I'm simply going to edit that. If you don't have umph and you're using something like the NNXT, you can do the same thing there. Uh, wrong button. I meant to click on the pencil. So ignore me. Clicking on the pencil. We will now listen to our sample. And we realize that it is happening somewhere over here. So let's go ahead and crop this. And this is where the pop is occurring, right here. It's really small, but we can see it. I'm going to hit fade out like 50 million times so that it's a smooth fade. Now we are no longer popping at the end. And uh, uh, let's go ahead and add in our bass. Well, first, Let's go ahead and see what we can do with this kick. Now it's the rat kick, so we know that it's gonna hit if we turn it up, right? Um, of course, that is distorted, so let's take that back to the original volume. If we wanted to affect that, what I usually do is add some sort of compression or uh, some sort of clipper. Um, there's a free clipper by Melda Productions that you can use if I could find Melda Productions Wave Shaper and this will allow us to shape it and distort it if we simply just drag up and let's hear it. Whoops. Another option we have besides this wave shaper is a uh, G clip, which is what I was originally going to pull up when I said clipper. Uh, G clip is made by GVXT. This is a rack extension. We're going to bring up the gain, turn down the clip. Clip is going to cut everything off in this display. And we could turn up softness if we want, want it to soft clip. I like hard clip. Now let's go ahead and add our bass in. And uh, let's solo our kick as well. And we'll unsolo this. And there. Let's add some distortion to this arrow. Wait, why don't we? Let's go with. There's uh, tons of distortions. I like uh, soft tube saturation is free. So we can add that. It's free in both rack extension version and VST. So whichever you prefer will work. Um, let's go with soft tube saturation knob. Uh, this is the rack extension version. I'm going to put this on keep high because I want to saturate the high frequencies of my 808. And let's hear it. And you can change it to neutral for mid frequencies and low for low frequencies. So this is all preference. 
I, I'll put it on keep low and I'll go ahead and turn down the saturation amount. Now, the next thing I will do is side chain these. These are, there are multiple ways to side chain. You can use something like, uh, track spacer, which will allow you to only duck the frequencies of the kick when the 808 plays rather than the entire signal, which would be regular side chain compression. You can use, uh, reaction by reasonistas or you can use the built-in sidechain compressors, you can use whatever you want. But in this case, I'm actually going to go with track spacer because it's going to allow me to only duck the frequencies of the kick when the 808 plays instead of the entire signal. So we'll still be able to hear those high frequencies and it won't get rid of the entire signal. So I'm going to create an instance of track spacer. And I'm just going to keep this open for a sec. I'm going to flip over to the back. And here where it has optional audio ends, we're going to connect the kick parallels. So now we hear our 808 being duck. So I like these settings how they are. And we can see how much of the 808 is ducking for the 808. And it's just the low frequencies here, which is great. So that is how I typically side chain my kick in 808. Next thing we'll do is add in our snare, which is located here. Let's turn that down. And I always check in my monitors because these headphones aren't very good at low frequency response. But for now, I take a high pass filter and put it on the, the snare because we don't need this low information. Then I do the same thing on snare two, volume and then filtering. And this is my snare. This is from uh, the Spider Demon drum kit. I meant to change it out, but I didn't by accident. So, oh well, it's there. I think that's a good volume for it. And this is my drum, so it was automatically uh, filtered in the creation process. But I'll go ahead and add a filter anyways. Then this clap is a third snare. So I'll change that and we will change the volume of that and let's go ahead and add some reverb to it here in umph we have easy access to reverb turn it up a bit let's go ahead and drop the pitch a bit we don't want it to be too attention grabbing it's just like an accent snare. So I like that. Let's go ahead and add this hi-hat. I like to do crazy things with my hi-hats. I'll often add a phaser or I will automate the pitch with an LFO. Um, we can do all of those things. So I have half time on it right now, which will add a low hi-hat to it that you can hear right now. I like doing that. So if I want to do an LFO, it's really simple to do it in umph. If you're using something else, uh, it's easy to follow. Um, this is drum six, drum five. So I'm going to come down to drum five and modulate the pitch. Just going to turn this up a little bit, the mount, and now we can hear it. And we can hear it changing more. And then what a phaser does is this. I'm gonna add this. And 
we put this after halftime. So if we wanted to put it before, we could. Holding down shift, I'm gonna drag it up. And I like that effect. Now another thing I do to my hi-hats is I add a pan effect. Cable Guys has a free plugin called Pancake and it will pan anything from left to right at any rate of which you draw. So we can speed this up to one bar. Really simple. And then once we have it panning in all types of different directions, we have to change the volume because it's louder now that it's not mono like the rest of the drums. So before we do that, I want to add some reverb. And here we see the reverb being added. I like a fairly low volume if it's panned from side to side. And in relation to everything else, this is what it would look like. Now as for the open hi-hat, I keep my open hi-hat the same volume as my hi-hats at their highest point. So just watch this. Perfect volume there. Now another thing you could do that's kind of creative in my opinion, you can sidechain the hi-hat and open hi-hat because technically drummers can't play both the hi-hat and the open hi-hat at the same time because it's one instrument, if you know what I'm saying. So uh, easy way to do that is to uh, come to the hi-hat and take this from the dynamic sidechain input and put it into the parallel of the hi-hat. All right, we can now edit this in our mixer. Dynamics. Turn on the compressor. Let's turn the threshold to the left. Turn up the ratio. So now every time the open hi-hat plays, the hi-hats will be quieted. We'll do a quick release and a fast attack. And that kind of gives it more bounce. So now I'm going to check my mix and my monitors. And I'll be right back. Okay, so before I even checked it, I unsoloed everything and I realized I didn't even have my, my reverb on. No wonder I could barely hear it. So now let's go through and listen to the sounds we added reverb to and see what they sound like. It was simply the hi-hat and the snare, the second snare, third snare. So we're going to turn down the reverb. And then on the snare, we're going to do the same thing. It plays on the fourth pattern and we'll turn that down as well perfect so I like that now I'm gonna check the mix in my monitors so after playing this in my monitors and reviewing what I did I ended up changing the volume of these snares I turned this one down and I turned this one up a bit so I will let you hear after the changes Now, I, after I mix my drums, I am clipping. And not here, but my master. So here on the V meter, we're doing quite a bit of clipping at a certain point. Actually, it doesn't really show here, barely. So if that happens to you, all you have to do is simply click all of your drums, find them all, everything that you mixed, uh, hold down shift, select them all, and turn them all down together. Then after that, you would mix relatively all of your instruments 
uh, add in your instruments. So now we will not be clipping anymore. Now, another thing I like to do to my drums once they are mixed completely is add some sort of similarity to them all. So I grab everything that I have programmed, which I grabbed a few extra things here, grab all of those and I route them to a new output bus called drum bus. So what I put on my master or my bus, drum bus, it varies from beat to beat depending on the filling I want. But in this case, I'm going to use supercharger, which is free. This is basically a compressor. It is a compressor. And I'm just going to add some dirt and punch. Turn it up a little bit. If we turn it up too much. We'll lose our dynamics. Uh, is that the best way to say that? We lose the character of our drums. So we don't want to add too much. And here we have a dry wet knob in which we can add a portion of the signal rather than the entire signal if we so choose to. So I usually add this and then uh, decrease the output so that we're not clipping at any point then i can start mixing in my sounds and instruments in the beat so if you like this video give it a like comment down below subscribe most definitely let me know what you would like to see next it's all culture kick back and cook up